right. Welcome in to fifth quarter. I'm Simone Eli alongside Gerhard Mathangani. Gerhard, of course, the stakes are always high in high school football, but it's even greater when region play is underway. Yeah, that's the great thing about week two, especially with the deeper regions with more teams. We saw Class 6A Region 1 all playing, a couple games in Class 7A as well, so it was a lot of fun. Yes, definitely the action-packed night, and it included one of the oldest rivalries in Alabama as our game of the week. As no doubt, it is the battle for the cannon. Once again, McGill, Tulin, and Murphy hooking up for the 93rd time in their history, this time over at Ladd Stadium. A lot of deeper than in this one early on, Simone. It's a great interception here by Murphy. However, this drive would stall right after that. So. Back to the ball for the Yellow Jackets, and it is Andrew Murchison on the carry. He gets into the end zone for the touchdown. First points of the game late in the first quarter. Early 7-0 lead for McGill Tulin. A little bit later, more Jackets defense. This is Mitchell Adams coming up with a huge sack here. And that would set up the special teams, and special teams, well, they put another touchdown on the board. Panthers forced to punt after that series, and it is blocked and recovered by Brandon Gibson. He takes it in for the touchdown. They would open the scoring up there. 13-0 at the half. The Yellow Jackets go on to win by a final score of 32-6. And here's a look at the celebration is on, of course, for the Yellow Jacket faithful. Check it out. McGill Tulin painting the cannon for now the 10th year in a row as they, has, they have absolutely dominated the battle of the cannon over Murphy. All right, headed to Theodore now. Bobcats hosting Spanish Fort tonight as both teams open Class 6A Region 1 play. Rough going offensively early on in this one, Gerhard. Check this out. Rainy weather in the first quarter, causing some issues with snaps for both teams. So no score after the first quarter, but the Bobcats would get things going on the ground in the second. Check this out. Handoff goes to Kendrick Abel. He's able to find a hole and shakes a few guys loose to find pay dirt. Bobcats take a 7-0 lead at home, looking to bounce back after that week one loss. But the Toro's not going anywhere. Aiden Schamberger, our Zaxxon Player of the Week, finds Justin Bonner for the short game, trying to get it into the end zone. They would have to settle for a field goal there. We're going to get 7-3 at the time. That was halftime score, and here is the final score in overtime. Wow. What a game. Spanish Fort is going to pull out the victory 24-21. Yeah, you talked about those big region games. Those are two great ones right there. Next up the stay in class 6A Region 1, St. Paul's and Baldwin County. St. Paul's leading 3-0 early on. This is Ty Quinton Mims. Playmaker. Great, great kickoff return here after the field goal. Sets up the offense in perfect field position. And that's when the offense goes to work behind quarterback Hayden Coley going up through a few players. We slow this thing down for you. It goes through Roderick Shoots' hands, caught by Tricarius French for the touchdown. BC Rain leads it. 7-3 after the extra point. Nearing the end of the first quarter, St. Paul's defensive star, Anthony Jones. Tank Jones recovers the fumble. You see why he's one of the best in America on defense, but then he gets it done on offense as well. Into the end zone for the touchdown for Tank Jones. St. Paul's up 10-7. They will go on to win this one. i score 24-21. All right, wrapping up our 6A Region 1 play. Top-ranked Sarah Land playing host to Blunt tonight. Early on, Blunt struggling to move the ball. The snap goes over the quarterback's head here and scooped up by Damon Williams for the touchdown. Sarah Land takes a 21-0 lead at home at that point. Still the first quarter later. Four-star D lineman Antonio Coleman, violent in the backfield there, forces the fumble. It's picked up and returned by Adrian Martin, 30 yards for another six. Later, the offense going to work. KJ Lacey connects with one of his top targets there. Dylan Alfred, the Texas commit to the Ole Miss commit, and Sarah Land rolls at home. Final score, 59-2-6 over one. Next up, let's move up classification up to 7-8. Baker hosting Alma Bryant. Alma Bryant playing their first game of the season tonight over at Baker, but Baker knocking on the door and getting into the end zone is Tristan Robertson waltzing for the game's first touchdown and early lead for coach Juan Johnson and company. A little bit later, Hornets again. Look out for Jamarian Pugh for the Hurricanes. Comes up with a huge sack there. Big play there on the defensive side. Gotta love that coach Bart Sessions. Defensive guy himself. And a little bit later on, this is Graham finding Christian White for the touchdown. An incredible catch. High points it. 16-0 lead at that point. Hornets go on to win by final score, 25 to nothing. All right, next one, not a region game, but a great matchup nonetheless. Top 10 matchup. MGM hosting the defending 5A champs, Gulf Shores. MGM new turf field looking good. Zach Golson, Mark Husband ready for battle. Let's get going here. MGM on the move. Shondell Harris goes 
deep, finds his receiver, and MGM is going to be on the forward first. Here's Jaden Smith, 6 nothing Vikings later. Dolphins running back Colin Wilson. Check out a little shake and bake here. Oh, here he goes. Nice. Up into the end zone goes Wilson on the touchdown. It's 7-6. to six. Dolphins take a lead. Later, Shondell Harris going to keep the one, this one himself this time into pay dirt. This one went down to the wire, but it's MGM pulling off the victory 21-17 for the go-ahead fourth quarter touchdown score. Nice stuff there. Let's stay in Class 7A. This is Fairhope and Faith Academy. This is Javion Johnson handing off to Cooper Gardner. He runs into the end zone for the touchdown and early 7-0 lead for Fairhope. A little bit later on, it is Faith Academy going to work here on offense. Brody Lambert throws it to Justin Hudson. But watch the defensive play here by Obi Watkins. Takes him down. Hudson loses the football. Fairhope ball. A little bit later on, more from Fairhope. It's Johnson again to Gardner. Into the end zone, early 14-0 lead. And then in the second quarter, Eli Quinley runs the ball right up the field. Almost goes the distance. Tackled there by Blake Westry. Fairhope wins it by the shutout, 36 to nothing. All right, UMS right opening up region play against LaFleur. This game was a low scoring affair last year. Similar battle in the first half tonight. Terry Curtis going to pull off some trickery in the first quarter. Max Fowler hits Bo Willis, who finds Denton Elliott in the end zone. Bulldogs take a 7 0 lead on the double pass. Beautiful execution there. Later in the first half, Rattlers trying to get on the board. D'Antonio Lejour comes down with the reception on the deep ball. He's brought down just short of the goal line. Micah Thomas going to punch it in to make it 7 6. That scoreboard hold in the first half, but UMS pulls out the victory 25 6 over LaFleur. Nice stuff there. Next up, homecoming night over at Orange Beach. Mako's hosting. Citronel. Wildcats will get on the board first behind running back Cy Bird takes it in for the early touchdown and just like that Citronel up early 7-0. A little bit later on more from Citronel. Dalen Edmonds watch him keep the play alive here. This is really sne sneaky athleticism and great catch here by Elijah Owens for the touchdown. Looks like last week. 14-0. You're exactly <laughs> right. Off to a great start Elijah Owens is. A little, little bit later on it's the Wildcat defense coming up with a huge play. Fumble on the play, picked up by Zachary Morgan. Scoop a score, 20 to nothing. Citronelle at that point. Citronelle goes on to win by a final score of 21-14. All right, we're just getting started here on fifth quarter. Plenty more highlights to come as we head out to Viger, How to Kill, St. Michael, and more. That's after the break. Stay with us.